So, earlier this week, we got some rather surprising news that at the same time was not unexpected. Earlier this week, Sony Pictures came out and announced that they were working on a Silk movie. For anybody who doesn't know, Silk is a character that just in the past couple years was introduced into the Spider-Man Kongs by writer Dan Slott, and she was this character who, when Peter Parker was bit by the radioactive spider that gave him his powers, it didn't immediately die. It then fell off, and then scurried around and was able to bite one more person before it died. That person was Peter Parker's classmate, Cindy Moon, who also ended up gaining spider powers, and she has a very long, complicated history that I will go into further as this video goes along. But Sony announced they were going to give her a movie. And I don't know how I feel about that. Because on the one hand, I actually really like the character of Silk. Silk is actually awesome, and I will go into all the details about why I love her and why I think she's awesome as this video goes along. But on the other hand, I'm not that excited for this because it's Sony. And I will go into all the reasons for that as this video goes along. So I just want to let you know right here at the top of this video, if you like my structured videos, the ones where I come in here and I know exactly what I'm going to say and I got a script all prepared for you, this ain't going to be that. No sorry. This is going to be kind of a therapy session episode of Comic Class because I'm coming in here and I just have a lot of feelings about this and I kind of just have to get them out there. I want to cover the good, I want to cover the bad, I want to cover everything in the middle and there you have the facts of what the heck might happen with this soap movie. So today it's going to be one of them rambling episodes, so buckle up and enjoy today's episode of Comic Class. So as you can tell from that opening, there is a lot to unpack from this announcement, despite the fact that there really was no announcement. The announcement was, they're making a Silk movie everyone. That is it. Sony came in here and just said, we're making a soap movie, and then kept on driving. They announced this thing as they poked their head out of a moving car. That is how quickly they announced this thing. And listen, I know who Silk is because I'm a big old comic book nerd. Sony, you could have at least like explained to everyone else out there who Silk was. You could have given everyone else a little bit of info on this character because I was reading the article about this announcement over on Variety, and to all the comic book fans out there, if you ever want to get an idea of how little the rest of the world knows about the thing that we love, just read a movie or general entertainment magazine article on an announcement about a comic book movie, <laughs> because I just have to get this out of my system real quick. I was reading this article on Variety, and it was mentioning all the movies that the person who is in charge of the Spider-Man films over at Sony has also overseen and then it ended by listing off all the other Spider-Man films that are about to come out and list out the new Spider-Man Far From Home film, the new Venom film, the new Enter the, uh, Into the Spider-Verse film with Miles Morales, and the girl trapped in the spider's web. What the hell was that last one? I looked at that and went, oh my god, did they announce another did they announce another Spider-Man film when I wasn't looking? The article also included in there the Silver Sable and Black Cat film. That thing was canceled. Like, weeks and months ago that thing was canceled. Like, official statement. I am i don't mean like when DC cancels a film because they didn't talk about it for three years. I mean they made the official announcement and said, we're not doing that film anymore. And yet Variety still included that in their announcement of upcoming Spider-Man films. So again, it was very clear the person writing this article was just like, I don't care, whatever, just quick Wikipedia search of what the hell is going on with this. Bam, just bleh, something out there about this. But then at the end they said, and the girl trapped in the spider's web. And I was like, what the hell? Are they making like a Mary Jane film? Who's the other, mate? can't be Gwen Stacy. They would have called it Spider Gwen or something like, no way. Is that, who is the girl trapped in the spider's web? Could it be Madam Web? What's going on? I put in way too much thought on that because I eventually just googled it. Turns out the girl trapped in the spider's web, it's the fourth part of a young adult novel series that's being adapted. And I was just like, 
So literally, you just looked up upcoming Sony film, saw one that had Spider in the title, and you went, clearly that's another Spider-Man film, right? So yeah, the general audience doesn't know who Cindy Moon is, but that's fine. I do not believe that you need to come in here and have a well-known character in order to make a film about them. Nobody on Earth knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were when their movie came out. That thing broke the bank. That thing was gangbusters. Everyone wanted to see that film, despite the fact that no one knew what the hell a group was. You do not need to have some big A-class character in there in order to make a superhero film about them anymore. We are past that. Hell, no one even knew who Iron Man was when that film came out. I know that this Marvel Cinematic Universe has existed for 10 years, so take it from a guy who is way older than most of my audience, I remember what the Iron Man audience was like before that film came out. No one knew who he was. Don Cheadle, who played War Machine in the second Iron Man film, thought Iron Man was a robot before he got cast in that film. So yeah, man, you do not have to have a big name character in order to make a movie about, but if you're going to make a movie about a character that the general audience doesn't know anything about, Sony, maybe come in here with like a press packet that just goes, here's all the bullet points, here's what you talk about, enjoy, that's something to talk about rather than just trusting them to figure it out on their own on Wikipedia. But okay, let me get into a little bit of the backstory on who Silk is. As I said, she was this character who was bitten by the same spider that bit Peter Parker and gave him his powers. However, a lot of people still think that Spider-Man got his powers because, hey, radioactivity, spider, bam, something happened with that. Over the years, they have gone into detail about the fact that Spider-Man didn't get his powers because of the science experiment. It was more of a mystical reason. It was more of that the radioactivity gave the spider the ability to connect Spider-Man to the spider totems. Basically, all animals have totems, and basically Peter got the spider totem's blessing. But Silk also got. But Silk got the blessing slightly differently than Peter did. Like, her powers are very similar to him, but in some ways they're also very different. Like, Peter actually had to build his own web shooters. Silk can actually shoot organic webbing out of her fingertips. It doesn't even come out like the little wrist thing. It comes straight out of the fingers, which I've always wondered exactly, like, what that would look like. Because the way that they draw that happening is almost like her fingers turn into webbing. So I'm going to be interested in seeing how they do that in the film. Um... But also, her spider sense is even greater than Peter. She can sense things even further away. She has a more detailed uh, understanding of what the spider sense is trying to tell her. So she does have little cool variations on the powers uh, from what Peter has. Now, after she got the powers, though, the reason why she had variations, it's because she was connected not just to these spider totems, but to a very specific spider totem. And if these hunters... The main one being Morlin, who is basically this Terminator vampire who keeps going around unstoppable, just killing all spider totems. If it ever killed Silk, it would possibly kill the other spider totems. It would kill the other people with spider powers. So, the first spider totem, the guy who had been studying Peter from the shadows all this time, this guy called Ezekiel, he found Silk and said, Listen, I know what she is, and I know that if these guys find her, we have... It would be the end for all of us. So we have to lock her up in this bunker. So she got separated from her parents and just locked in this bunker for about 13 years. She sat in there just by herself, her and just video footage of Ezekiel, making sure that no one could ever find her. And then one day Spider-Man found her and she was freed. So now her story is that she has to now track down what happened to her family. Where did they go? What happened to them after she disappeared? And she actually had some pretty heart-touching twists and turns in there. But one of the things I really love about Silk is she kind of has this arrested development. She has this uh, whole look on life of someone who hasn't really progressed for 13 years. Because she's now living in the modern world, but she doesn't know what's popular these days. To her, like, everything from her childhood is still, like, a big deal. There's a moment in which you see her apartment after she finally got a job and she could actually furnish it herself, and there was, like, a Majora's Mask statue in there. I was like, I instantly have a connection to this character. The first villain that she ever fought, she just kept calling him Pokemon Guy because he was a guy with, like, big dragon wings. And, like, after she called him Pokemon Guy, she was like, wait, is Pokemon still a thing? Is that? And in my head, I was just instantly like, I love the idea of this superhero who's into Pokemon. As a person who is into Pokemon himself, 
Again, instant connection to this character. Also, I just find it adorable, this idea that when she went into that bunker, like, gold and silver were the latest installments. Imagine her getting out there and then just seeing what's going on with the Alolan forms. Uh, sorry, I got real geeky about something that isn't comics. You guys aren't here to hear that for now. So yeah, I really like the character of Silk. I really like her struggle of having to find her family. I really like her personality that's like, yeah, man, I'm still kind of just a big geek from when I was a kid, but now I actually need a job and I need to actually, like, socialize with other people. And I don't know how to do that. I was by myself for 13 years. I don't know how to communicate with other people. I honestly think she's a character that a whole lot of comic fans can kind of relate to. However, if you are hearing this and you're like, oh man, I gotta check this out. I'm gonna check out her first appearance. Stop. Don't know. Cut that off right there. When she first appeared, she was being written by Dan Slott in the rebooted Amazing Spider-Man series. And Dan Slott does so many things so incredibly well. That dude could not write women in his run on Spider-Man. Which is weird because he can actually write women in other series, in his Silver Surfer series, the character of Dawn that he created for that. One of the best characters out there at Marvel when he was writing that book. But for some reason, when he was writing Spider-Man, he just couldn't write female characters very well. And I kept having that thought in my head over and over and over again. But I was like, is it just me? I don't think anybody else really knows this. And then one day, this woman was going just on a rant in my comic book store about the Dan Slott run on Spider-Man. About how I was like, oh my god, just get him off the book already. I love this character. He's been on there way too long. He's wrecking him. And I was just sitting there like, yes, yes, go on, continue. I'm with you so far. And then she goes, and also, he cannot write female characters. And like the moment that she said that, I was like, oh, it's not just me. Other people see that too. Because when Silk popped up, not only did she pop up and she had this whole origin story that I already explained, she also had this weird thing where because she was connected to a different spider totem than Spider-Man, the two of them now just had an uncontrollable lust for each other. If they got too close to each other, they would start humping like rabbits. And I remember reading that just thinking, what is going on in this book? Her entire personality when Dan Slott wrote her was just, here's a snarky quip, now I'm gonna bang Peter Parker. And I was like, that's not a character, that's a fantasy come to life. That's... That is not like a three-dimensional character you're giving me. It wasn't until after she was introduced that Robbie Thompson and Stacey Lee gave her her own ongoing series, and that book was great. All that stuff I talked about, about her backstory, about her personal struggle, about getting inside her head, about seeing all the conflict going on inside of her, about also seeing her unique quirky sense of humor as it plays into her kind of being lost in time in a way. Yeah, all of that was in that ongoing series by those two creators. If you are ever going to check out Silk, skip her origin story, skip all over that, completely ignore that, go directly into the Robbie Thompson series, and if you're wondering, well, won't I be lost? Everything that I just told you about her origin story, that's all you need to know. You're totally fine. You do not need a single other thing before starting that book. Just go ahead, start the Robbie Thompson and Stacey Lee Silk series, and if you want to check that out, it will be in the description down below. Check there for an Amazon link to where you can go and buy this, and if you go ahead and you buy that book through that link, or even if you don't buy that book or you buy anything else on Amazon, as long as you start by going through that link, we get a small cut of the profits. It's a great way to treat yourself and help us grow at the same time. Okay, now that the business part of this is out of the way, so yes, you guys know I love Silk. I think she is a fantastic character. So why am I not all that excited about her getting a movie? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The number one problem I have with this film is that I don't know if it's actually happening. I would love for it to happen, but this is Sony that we're dealing with. And Sony has announced a Venom movie, a Miles Morales movie, a Black Cat and Silver Sable film, which, when it began, was two separate films focusing on each of them individually, and an Aunt May film featuring her in her younger days when she was a spy. I am not kidding you, they said they were making that. But they canceled that one. And they canceled the Silver Sable Black Cat film. So those ones are officially off the table. But the Miles Morales movie is happening. And the Venom movie is happening. And I will admit, 
at least with the Venom movie, Miles Morales, I was like, okay, you know what, this one might, this one might happen. But Venom, I was like, no, that's not, there is no way in hell you're actually making that one. Oh my god, there's a trailer out for it. Holy crap, it's actually here. Uh, so yeah, it's one of those things where, okay, you have a 50-50 shot on this. Of whether or not this is going to actually get made. And that's the reason why I'm even talking about it here today, because it's not like DC. DC literally has over 20 movies right now that are in production. Many of which they announced years ago. And they have not given any updates on it. But they're apparently still happening. In fact, often they will not talk about a film for three, four, five years. Then out of nowhere come in here with an update like, we got a producer on It's like, what, that's still happening? What? Sometimes they will double announce that a movie is happening just to remind you it's still here. Like a Jared Leto Joker film? They announced that like a year or two ago that that was happening. And then just like a month ago they came out here and said, yeah, it's still happening. And for anybody who's going to say, no, you're thinking of the Martin Scorsese film that's going to be set in an alternate reality from the DC Cinematic Universe. No, I'm keeping that one separate. Because remember when they announced that one? And everybody said, oh, so I guess that Jared Leto one that you announced earlier isn't happening anymore. And DC said, no, that one's still happening as well. We're doing two films. Yeah. So DC just spews out there. I was about to use a much worse word. They're just spew movie announcements out there. And I look at them and it's like, you've announced so many of these that until I see a trailer, I don't care about them. I am treating all these as not happening until I see a trailer. But I said the exact same thing with Venom, and we got a trailer. And yeah, I looked at the Ant May spy film and I was like, that's not happening. Oh, you officially said that's not happening. Okay. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Sony is actually running their announcements way more professionally than Warner Brothers is, because yes, they'll announce some crazy crap, but like half of it is actually happening. And the other half, they'll at least have the decency to come in here and say, yeah, no, that's not happening anymore. That's a, mm, yeah, let's not talk about it anymore. It's gone forever. So yeah, in all honesty, I think one of the main reasons why I'm not more excited about this Silk movie is because, yeah, there's a 50% chance that this isn't happening. But even if it does happen, it's still Sony. And that's the other big problem. Sony does not have a good track record when it comes to their superhero films or the vast majority of their films. So many of the films over at Sony, it's so clear it's being run by committee. It's being run by charts. It's being run by guys who went, well, we just saw that this was trending on Twitter, so this is the popular thing at the moment, so we have to make a movie about this that won't come out for two more years. Yeah, it's so bizarre watching how Sony just falls ass backwards into failure over and over again. I mean, listen, I'm a diehard Spidey fan, but those amazing Spider-Man films, dear God, they were bad. And they've been doing this for a while. They screwed over Spider-Man 3 because they ran it by committee. They took this thing and was like, hey, you've been doing some interesting creative stuff over there on the Spider-Man film, Sam Raimi. Let's have you not do that anymore. Let's now come in here and tell you the kids love Venom. They want to see Venom. We don't care how you put it in there, just put out their Venom. Speaking of Venom, Oh my goodness, that trailer for the Venom film looks so bad. It looks even worse than what I had imagined it could possibly be. And I'm not even bringing up the fact that Venom doesn't really even make sense as a character if he's existing in a world where Spider-Man doesn't exist. You've completely changed the character almost completely around. Just looking at it as its own thing, not connected to anything else, trying to look at that trailer as its own unique creation, it doesn't look good. There is no part of that trailer aside from the special effects at the very end of it that make me go, oh, okay, that was like, it could be kind of interesting. 95% of that trailer looks awful. But when you look over at the Miles Morales film, the end of the Spider-Verse movie, it looks like they kind of backed off on that one. Again, I am judging these by the trailers, but that's literally the purpose of a trailer, so I'm not apologizing too much for that. The Venom film could come out, it could be amazing. The Miles Morales film could come out and it could be bad. But at the moment, it looks like it's the opposite way around. It looks like the Venom film, yeah, it's being run by committee again. It looks like what so many of the Sony films are guilty of. 
But the Miles Morales film, you look at that, it's like, this is original. This is creative. This is very different. This looks like it actually has some heart. The humor in here is actually really good. Could this actually be, like, a good movie? Don't get me wrong, at the end of that trailer for Into the Spider-Verse, Gwen Stacy pops up, and you know that's because a boardroom came in there and said, all the charts say that people love Spider-Gwen. Her merchandise sells like crazy. We need to get that merchandise out there. We need a chunk of that change, all right? So you can tell they're still manipulating this a little bit, but the vast majority of this, yeah, it looks good. It looks like the exact opposite of the Venom trailer. Because the Venom trailer is absolute garbage up until the last couple seconds of that when the big face appears and it's like, okay, that actually looks kind of cool. Into the Spider-Verse is the exact opposite. It looks like, oh man, that's really cool. Oh yeah, we just out of nowhere, Spider-Gwen. Okay, that's a weird thing to throw in there. Don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to Spider-Gwen being in the Miles Morales film. They do want to establish a whole spider family in there, which I actually think is kind of a cool idea to do in a film. Again, I'm just speaking as a massive Spider-Man fan on that one. So if you want her to be in the film, that's fine. But the fact that she was in the trailer, again, that's what makes me go, that's like a committee decision right there. That's people saying, let's look at the numbers and see what people like kind of thing. Yeah, uh, that doesn't always create the best films. Uh, but yeah, my point is, I'm looking at the Miles Morales film and I'm like, oh man, did Sony actually learn their lesson to back the fudge off of these things? Because this looks original. This looks like it has heart. It looks creative. And that's when I start thinking about the upcoming Silk film. This could either be them looking at this and going, you know what? Listen, this is a unique character who is very different from the other characters we made movies about. She also is going to speak to a demographic we don't typically make movies for. Let's get some people in there who might understand the character and might understand how to make a film like this. And then we back off. And you know what? They could come up with something great then. But it could also be them going, well, Marvel's gonna have their Captain Marvel movie come out, and Wonder Woman was the biggest film over at DC. We need to get us a female character in here now. Which again, I'm totally cool with that. There need to be more movie spotlighting female superheroes. But the fact that Sony is doing it makes me go, yeah, I'm wondering if this was again a committee decision. If this was them just going, well, when you look at the charts, it looks like that is a hot thing right now. So we need to get our fingers all in that and make sure that we manipulate everything about because that's how we roll. We're Sony, the people who don't know when to stop manipulating. So yeah, I have like a 50-50 feeling that this film isn't getting made. And then there's a 50-50 chance that it will actually be good. So I'm holding on to that fire. I am holding on to that one fourth going, please let this be good, please let this be good. I really like this character. I really want to see her be treated right. But this raises up a question of what is the film going to be? Because are we going to have this be its own universe as well? Are you going to have it be like the Miles Morales film, Into the Spider-Verse? Where now she's in an alternate reality. It's like, oh, you know that reality over there with Peter Parker that you know? This is a different reality. No, not that different reality. A third different reality. In this one, Peter Parker, he's still an adult again, but I'm also an adult, and there's no Miles and no Gwen. Or maybe there is. Who knows? Who can say? Or, like I said, with Spider-Gwen popping up at the end of the Into the Spider-Verse trailer, and also with it being called Spider-Verse, a storyline in the comics that had to do with multiple different spider people. Is this going to be a reality where the other spider people exist? Like, is Miles in this film going to be joining the giant spider family? Is that what this movie is going to be about? Because I love the spider family. I actually do want to kind of see them all in a movie together. But is that what you're going to do? And if that is what you're going to do, I'd actually be okay with it. Because that makes way more sense then starting up a third alternate reality Spider-Man franchise to introduce yet another character. That's going down kind of a dark path here in which every time that you have to create a new character, you have to create a new alternate reality for them. So if you want to actually have the Miles Morales film start its own Spider-Verse in which you kind of do like your own Marvel Cinematic Universe just around spider people, and you have that kick it off by telling everyone, hey, there's a bunch of other spider people out there and you're gonna see films on all of them. That would be kind of cool and it would make way more sense than giving every character their own alternate universe. Except for one thing. Into the Spider-Verse is animated. 
So if all your other Spider People films are going to be set in this universe, don't they kind of have to be animated too? Because it's not like in the Silk film, that's going to be set in the Spider-Verse universe, but it will be live action, and then all of a sudden, Nick from New Girl is going to pop up in Spider-Man threads and like, Hey everybody, uh, I know I look nothing like I did in that other film, but it's still me. Spider-Man, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, that would be an odd choice to have live action films and animated films happening in the same universe. Because then it does raise the question of, well, what do you do about the actors for these roles? Because I know the person who is doing the voice of Miles Morales is not that age. So if Miles Morales pops up in here, you'd have to have him keep the mask on at all times. It would be incredibly odd. So what would happen if they did make the Silk film an animated film? Honestly, it wouldn't be that bad of a choice. Because Sony does need to do more than just saying, hey, it's all Spider-People, to help establish their Spider-Man films and their Spider-Verse full of films as being separate from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because the Marvel Cinematic Universe also has Spider-Man people in it. It also has Spider-Villains in it. It has Spider-Man supporting characters in there. And listen, we, comic book fans, we know all the weird, crazy wheelings and dealings going on, and the die-hard movie fans who keep up to date on all this, they all, they know all the wheelings and dealings. The average moviegoer, though, just goes to the movie. And yeah, they can grasp the concept of a shared universe, but as soon as you start introducing other shared universes that happen to share the same characters, that's when it gets confusing. And Spider-Verse, the fact that every single trailer has started by saying, this ain't the universe you know. There is an alternate reality out there. That's what's going on. That helps. That helps. But the big thing that helps is that it's animated. The fact it's animated makes it very clear to even the most average moviegoer out there, this is not that. That's live action. That's its own universe. This is animated. That's its own universe. So yeah, as much as I would like to see a live-action Silk jumping around, making it animated actually would be kind of a smart choice. Which again, I think might be the reason why Sony didn't announce Squat with this Silk film. I think they just came in here and said, hey, we're making it because they really need to wait and see how this Miles Morales film does. If that gets good reviews, I know it's going to do well at the box office. I mean, Spider-Man's big, Miles Morales is big, everything in that whole film is big. It's going to do well as far as box office goes, but reviews. We are now living in a day and age in which if the critics all hate something, you tend to see a pretty massive drop-off from week one to week two, and especially from film one to film two. So yeah, it's going to be a question of what happens with the Miles film, what happens with the Silk film. I don't think this is like a plan B kind of situation where, oh, if the Miles Morales film doesn't do well, we'll just start up the Silk films. I think that they are indeed relying on Silk somehow tying into that. But again, this is Sony. As I said, it would make a lot of sense to set this in the same universe as Miles Morales. It would make a lot of sense to make this animated as well. Sony never really makes sense. Again, I'd like to point out, before they decide to make a Silk film, they decide to make an Aunt May is a Spy film. That is an actual thing they said they were going to do. This is not a company known for making smart choices. Just occasionally they fall into a smart choice. So again, this all comes back to what my big feeling is on all this. I am totally in favor of a Silk film. If the Miles Morales film comes out and it proves to us, oh my god, Sony learned their lesson. They know what they're doing. In fact, you know what? The Venom film hasn't come out yet. It could prove that they- I'm not even finishing that sentence. Uh, the Miles Morales film, it could prove that they learned their lesson. So yes, this could be the start of something truly unique, something truly special in which we get these, all these amazing, gorgeous-looking, animated superhero films all set in a shared universe that focuses on the Spider family, really fleshes them all out. As a Spider-Man fan, as a fan of superhero movies, I am 100% behind that. But it's Sony. I don't know if they've realized that's a smart choice. 
Or if they just think, hey man, what's better than one shared universe? Multiple shared universes. Venom in his own universe, Miles Morales in his own universe, Sug in her own universe, Black Cat in her own universe. Oh, we can make all the universes, man, and then give all their supporting characters spin-off films. Sug has no supporting characters, okay? That ain't happening, okay? So yes, sorry that this wasn't the most informative episode of Comic Class. It was a little bit informative. I came in here, told you who Silk was, gave you some reading recommendation on her, as I typically do on Comic Class. But I had to kind of just get all this off my chest. Because I really do like the character of Silk, and I think that she could make an awesome character for a film. But it's Sony, and Sony has not proven to me yet that they can back this up. They haven't proven to me yet that they know what they're doing, but I see potential here. When I look at their plans as they have it laid out right now, I can see a direction in which this could become something really special. So I hope that me getting all my thoughts out there helped you guys form your own thoughts on this Silk film. Let me know what you think about this Silk film in the comments down below, or also let me know on Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr at Professor Thorgy. And as I said, if you want to che start checking out Silk, check the description down below for a link to Amazon of where you can pick out the first trade for her ongoing series. Again, I absolutely love that series. It was a huge surprise. I didn't know what to expect going into it, but I walked out of there with a character that I had previously not cared about at all, now really enjoying her. So again, thank you guys very much, and make sure that you come back next time. Bye, everyone.